Good afternoon, family and friends. And if you're just visiting the channel, welcome. This is AMZ Backyard Orchard and Vineyard. And I just wanted to get you another, we're becoming a weekly update. We've been getting a lot of questions on this particular tree. This is our Moringa. This Moringa has been in the ground. This is, I think the fourth, fourth year in the ground, maybe fifth year. And we've been getting a lot of questions on either how to get the seeds, where to get the seeds, when to plant, how to plant, how to water it, how to fertilize it. Well, Moringa's, Moringa seeds are really easy to find online. You can either find them on Amazon. We found these on eBay. And they were only a few dollars each for like 50 or even 100 seeds. But I'm telling you, the germination rate on these seeds are so high. You plant one seed and you'll get one tree. You plant 10 seeds and you'll probably get 10 trees. So if you're planning on growing Moringa in about two years, it'll grow 15 to 20 feet tall. We prune this tree. We prune it constantly for production, but we hard prune it when this tree does go dormant. Now you can see right inside here, that's where we pruned it. And the prune looked like this after we cut it. We just cut it right there and the prune looked like that. And then it shot out a branch and this tree grows so aggressively. We can do that year after year after year and it'll just keep repeating itself. In fact, we've done that many times. In fact, you can see all the prunes that we've had. We have a pruning video. I'll leave that down in the description and the little link right here up in the upper right hand corner of our pruning video. In fact, we've got two of them. Very important. We've got a pruning video and then update on pruning. And these Moringas love pruning, but only when they go dormant. We live in Arizona. This is growing zone 9B. And this is the third week of November and it's still pushing out flowers. Look at this. I noticed some bees in this tree earlier and it's starting to produce some flowers. In fact, you can see the flowers right up there and see if I can bring this branch down real quick. Look at these. There we go. So these flowers are totally edible. In fact, some people even make them out of teas and they're sweet. I'm not going to eat them right now on camera, but I will pull these off and eat some of these because we've got thousands and thousands of these little flower buds. So me eating a small handful right now is not going to hurt this tree. Now they do grow bean pods when those flowers do pollinate. Usually during the summertime, they'll grow a long bean and that pod is called a drumstick. And I've got a few extras here to show you right here. These pods, in fact, there's some more back in here. These pods grow these seeds and they just snap off. And you've got all these seeds inside here. Now I mentioned to you that these things have a high germination rate. If I were to plant this into the ground, pretty much all these seeds would germinate and they just fall into the ground and they fall into your mulch and you get little Moringa sprouts growing everywhere. In fact, here's probably the bean pod that fell. There's another one. These things are just full of seeds. Look at that. Just seeds everywhere. This is what they look like. Kind of a triangular looking thing. Let me get that in focus for you. Kind of a triangular looking thing. And yeah, you just put that in the ground and it grows and grows and grows. It'll grow basically an inch a day once it starts sprouting. It's a good climbing tree. You can see the cats. This is Debbie, she's in pretty much all of our videos. It's a good climbing tree. Kids can climb it. We tend to prune it so the tree doesn't get too big. But you can see the cats love climbing in trees. So anyhow, so watering, we do have a ring around it. That was initial for the first couple years to really get the roots established. Now we've got drip line. You can see all the bushes. We've got drip line all around the tree. So we heavy water it once a week, maybe every other week. Like I said, this is the third week in November. So we're watering it very infrequently now, maybe 
once a month because things are starting to slow down. We are getting our chill hours. And so this tree is getting a little bit dormant. In fact, you can see some of the discoloration of the leaves. It is slightly deciduous. We are in growing zone 9B, like I mentioned, and we do get pretty chilly. We can get down into the 20s sometimes at night and this thing just plows right through it. No problem, as soon as they're established. First couple years, we do need to frost protect them. You can prune them when they do go dormant and then cover them up with some cloth if you're expecting any freezing temperatures. Other than that, these things can handle the frost, a light frost, but not multiple nights of frost, if that makes any sense. Moringa do not need fertilizing. You can. We put mulch down to protect the main root core. But Moringas, they mine all the minerals and all the nutrients out of the ground. They have a massive root system way beneath the ground. And they mine all the nutrients. And you'll eat these leaves and they are full of nutrients. This tree is also called the tree of life because these are such a high superfood. These leaves, you can eat, serving size is about three tablespoons dry I kind of overdo it a little bit. I eat them fresh and I'll eat, I'll eat this whole branch right here of leaves, probably at least a half a cup. And I'll put the leaves in my salad and just eat them that way. You can dry them out, powder them up and put them in your smoothies. People do that a lot. In fact, I'm starting to see Moringa as a supplement for your smoothies at your favorite smoothie shop and it just adds a lot of nutrients. In fact, it's got protein in it, believe it or not. This tree has got protein in it and calcium and all the other vital nutrients that this tree mines out of the ground. And this whole tree is edible. You can eat the branches. You can chew on the branches when they're green, kind of like little fiddleheads with ferns. And you just eat these little, little tiny branches and you can eat them like asparagus. You can steam them. When I eat this in large amounts, the leaves, when I eat the leaves in large amounts, I kind of have vivid dreams and I remember them. Sometimes I don't remember my dreams, but some of these dreams are very vivid and they're, you almost feel like you're, you're, you know, you're not hallucinating, but you just feel alive in your dreams and that happened a couple nights when I ate a lot of this stuff and uh, it didn't hurt me at all no side effects at all whatsoever in fact I felt amazing when I woke up so maybe maybe this if you eat these at nighttime maybe it might help you with sleep give it a try grow yourself a moringa tree and see what kind of health benefits it does for you individually. Everybody is different. We all have different diets and different lifestyles. A lot of us are living with stress. Maybe this might be an answer for you, who knows? It worked for me, I know that. So I highly encourage you to get yourself a Moringa tree. Grow your own Moringa, don't buy it at the store. Sometimes it can be up to $15 a pound for this dry stuff. When you can grow it, you can grow it. Grow it a seed and in a few weeks you'll have a small little Moringa tree and you just keep plucking all the leaves off just like this, just like that. And you just pop that in your salad or however you want to consume it and see what this tree does to you. How it helps you, how it helps your life. Blood pressure, cholesterol, all that stuff. Try some greens. Put some greens in your life. I promise it won't hurt you. And if it does, let me know. <laughs> so that's about it with this video. If you have any more questions, comments, or concerns on the Moringa, please leave them down in the comment section below. We do love hearing from all of our viewers. So from my family to yours, thanks for watching.